Hey, thanks for coming back for the next update on the Barnfind Audi TT Roadster restoration. I'm so close, but what build isn't complete with a set of hurdles to overcome? So far, there's been a broken engine, cracked replacement oil pan, incomplete wiring loom, and many more. Next is a very common issue for a lot of Audi TT owners that will come across, and that's your radiator fans not working. I've discovered that the TT overheats and the radiator fans don't seem to work properly. You can see that as the car gets up to temperature, there's no cooling action and the temperature just keeps creeping higher and higher, which also makes the needle move from its normal 90 position. Now, I can't let it go anywhere until this issue is resolved, so what options are there to figure out what's going on with the radiator fans? If you like my content, please remember to like and subscribe, it really does help me out. The first option is to pull the 10 amp fuse at position 16 in the interior fuse panel. The result you want here is for both fans to run at low speed. If either of the fans don't run, then that means you'll need to replace that fan. I'll post part numbers in the description below for the Quattro Audi TT fans. This is also applicable for the Audi S3 8L. If both fans don't run, that means you'll probably need to replace the fan control module. Since both fans are running, I know they're still good and I don't need to replace them. Returning the fuse should make them stop again, and so what's the next test? The next test you can do is power the fans directly from the triangle shaped switch which bypasses the fan control module. Here you can test if high or low speeds are functioning properly. You want to get yourself a thick gauge wire and some spade terminals on the ends. Disconnect the triangle plug from the sensor in the radiator. You might need to access this from underneath or have the bumper off like I have here which makes it really easy. First, join pin 2 to pin 1. The result you want here are for both fans to run at low speed. If either of the fans don't work, then you'll need to replace that fan or replace both fans as the resistor in them has failed. This is the most common issue. There's also the option to do the resistor bypass mod, which moves the resistors externally to the fans and gets the low speeds working again. However, I'm not going to do that. Another quick check is to make sure these green fuses on top of the battery are all good. With ignition off, you should observe that the fans run at low speed. So let's have a look. Okay, so that's a good sign that the low speed resistors are working. Now what you want to do is join pin number 2 to pin number 3. You can hear that as I'm making contact with pin 3, the fans are activating, which is good, but I need it to run consistently to perform the test. The result you want here are for both fans to run at high speed. If either of the fans don't work, then you'll need to replace that fan or replace both fans. Okay, so it looks like both low and high speed has been verified to work with a direct connection to power. So we know that 100% that the fans aren't the issue. So what else can it be? I'm going to remove the battery and battery tray to check the grounding points under there as well as assess if there's anything wrong with a fan control module.
Once the battery tray is out, there are these two 10mm bolts to remove, which releases the fan control module. This can then be swung up and into the engine bay for easy removal of the two big plugs. On visual inspection, nothing is wrong, but I do have a spare one laying around, so I'll swap that one in. The printed side faces away from the engine. With the replacement fan control module in there, I reconnect everything, but there's no change to the fan function. So it's definitely not a broken fan module. So what else is there to try? I felt the top radiator hose and the bottom radiator hose. So I noticed that the top radiator hose was really hot, like really, really hot. But when touching the bottom hose, it was definitely much colder than the top one. And this was a really big hint as to what was happening. Coolant isn't circulating properly, but enough that the coolant temperature sensor was picking up the hot coolant. So that means the water pump is good, which I know as I changed that on the timing belt service. To see that timing belt video, click on the link in the top right. Off comes the inlet manifold trim and bracket. The area of focus is the thermostat. So once the two 10 mil bolts are off, you can see the issue straight away. So what I've done is I've actually installed the thermostat the complete wrong way around. The spring side shouldn't be facing this way. Here's a shot which boosts visibility. Once the thermostat is turned the other way around, I can reassemble everything again. With the thermostat reinstalled properly, I can go back and warm up the engine, squeezing the hoses to ensure no air bubbles get trapped and at the same time observing for any fan action. And this time you can see that they're freaking working, finally. You can see that as the temperature is regulated, the fans stop. And getting back up to temperature, the fans start again. This means nothing was wrong with the electrics at all. It was all in me putting the thermostat the wrong way around. Complete case of user error. <laughs> now I know not to install the thermostats the wrong way around and hopefully this helps you to troubleshoot your Audi TT fans not working properly. The issue is super common and can be several issues but these tests should help you determine why your Audi TT 1.8T Quattro radiator fans don't work. Thanks for watching and see you on the next update. Bye!